I am Rainer Schulte, the director of the Center for Translation Studies at the University of Texas at Dallas. I edit Translation Review, have been editing it since 1978. I also founded and was very much involved in the first 30 years of the American Literary Translators Association, which was housed at the University of Texas at Dallas until 2014. Today, I am pleased to introduce a poet who has now become tremendously known in the world because she was one of the strong poets of the Nazi regime. She was persecuted everywhere she lived in Germany. She had to hide in her own house in different family houses. And then finally, in 1940, she decided that she had to emigrate, and she emigrated to Sweden, where she wrote almost all of her poetry that was thereafter published and probably also translated into 60 different languages. What's so interesting about her is the creation of a different kind of attitude toward poetry. We as readers are generally accustomed to ask the question, what does the poem mean? And to ask that question for Nelly Sachs, S-A-C-H-S, poetry would not get very far because the question, what does a poem mean, is not applicable to her, because what she does in her poetry is to create an atmosphere that gives me, the reader, of the horror and the pain that she experienced while she was a Jewish person in Germany. And she actually did not want to ever go back to Germany, which I believe is the case. But she did go to Switzerland once. And while she was in Switzerland, all of a sudden she heard somebody pronouncing German words. And the, the moment when she heard these German words, she fainted. That was so horrible for her that reminded her of all the disasters, the pain, and the injustices she had received in her earlier life in Germany. So what does this do for her poetry? We can't ask the question each time we read a poem, what does it mean? Interestingly enough also, that very many of her poems have no title. And many of her poems are also very short. So what does that indicate? We need to look at each poem that it creates its own images, its own sound, that are reflecting the horror and the pain and the neglect that she experienced in Germany. How do we then, as a poet, recreate the atmosphere that has guided her life, has fashioned her life, and also has made her extremely well known in the realm of German poetry and international poetry. How do we go about rediscovering the power of her poems? First of all, the titles of the collection of her poems, in many cases, have death in it, have death fugue, similarities that was created by Paul Celan, and he created to himself and to us a sense of what this dissonant sound had to be to get the attention, the atmosphere, the images, and also the music of that particular poetry that reflects the disaster of the Jewish community in Germany, Auschwitz and Holocaust. Just to give us an idea of how this worked, we look at Todesfuge, the Death Fugue by Paul Celan. Schwarze Milch der Früh, wir trinken sie abends. Wir trinken sie mittags und morgens, wir trinken sie nachts. Wir trinken und trinken. Wir schaufeln ein Grab in den Lüften, da liegt man nicht eng. 
fugue of death which has become probably the most well-known poet and poem of the holocaust just a few lines now in english black milk of daybreak we drink at nightfall we drink it at noon in the morning we drink it at night we drink it we drink it we are digging a grave in the sky it is ample to lie there so what we are finding out the same way that we had in music that all of a sudden a different sound is being created by the composers whether it's charles ives schoenberg and the others thereafter we now find that there is a predominance of creating, inventing, and repeating, especially words that have the darkness of their existence. And the darkness of their existence is simply starting with death, starting with pain, starting furthermore what is left there for us to do. In one of the cases in Saxe's poem, I touch my lips. And what do I find? Silence, silence, silence. The idea of silence also in modern poetry has become predominant. Even if we look at Proust, his great novel is built on silence. What is it? We're trying to find the silence that might give us a way out of the disasters, of the pain, of the deaths we have experienced. And Sachs is at the forefront of that. She knew how to really give new life to her atmosphere of poetic vision that is based on the poems that she created. First of all, a lot of the poems have no titles. How can you give a title to a poem that cannot be expressing the meaning that you want it to have? So all you can do is present yourself and have an ear for the sounds of the words and then especially also the associations of the words and these associations in most cases are very dark are very very dark and that gives me the reader an entrance into the darkness of her poetry which however lives ultimately on the way they have been composed the poems have composed they have their own convincing tone their own convincing words that makes me feel comfortable as I read and be inside the associations of the words and the associations of the sounds that she has created. Just as an example, I want to read one poem that she has uh, also created. It's called The Sleep Walker, The Schlafwandler. Der Schlafwandler, kreisend auf seinem Stern an der weißen Feder des Morgens, erwacht. Der Blutfleck darauf erinnert ihn, lässt den Mond erschrecken fallen. Die Schneebeere zerbricht am schwarzen Aschat der Nacht, Traum besudelt. Kein reines Weißes auf Erden. The last sentence, I take it first. No pure white on this earth is the end of the poem. There is no positive anymore. The white is not there anymore. What we have is a sleepwalker. What we have is blood. What we have flowers that have died, etc. So just a few words from the sleepwalker. The sleepwalker, circling upon his star, is awakened by the white feather of morning, and so on. It is, again, one dark word after the other, and it's not necessarily sometimes that we really listen to the wholeness of the poem, but that we begin to live inside of the words that she has created because the associations of the words take me, the reader, inside the word, the atmosphere of the word, and gives me an idea of what she suffered. But after all, the expression of art it always lives in itself because it continues to give me the reader, a certain 
internal sat satisfaction and an internal silence that I can feed, that I can refill, and therefore I begin to have a positive attitude toward that poetry which is based on the disaster of the poli political world in Germany and all of a sudden we have an explosion of all the poems, the poets who are recreating the atmosphere. That will stay with us even though the words might change in the future. Mm -hmm.